God bless you. Thank you for joining us. I'm Minister Billy Burton and welcome to our new teaching series called Understanding the Tithe. For a long time now, there has been a need and a demand for this type of teaching. And it is my humble prayer that what you get out of these lessons will be the word from the Lord that you've been asking and praying for that feeds your spirit, frees your soul, and brings you into maturity concerning the will of God and the tithe. This series is brought to you by Inspirational Minutes Ministries International, Healthy Java Talk, and those of you who faithfully support our ministry work with your contributions and your prayers. We have every intention of reaching you right where you are, and we ask that you share our lessons so that they can help as many people as possible. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on Facebook where you can listen to and read these lessons at a time that's best for you. Our Facebook link is conveniently posted below. Our background music, Tucked in Bed, is composed and performed by J. Mann at www.ourmusicbox.com. First, let's pray, and then we'll get right into this lesson of Understanding the Tide. Heavenly Father, we ask that as we go into this lesson, that you open the eyes of our enlightenment. All of us, Lord, for we are equal, none any greater than the other. I thank you for using me to bring this lesson, this teaching, and this series. And I pray, Lord, that you anoint everything that you have said and commanded to be done. My intent is to teach and to share what you have shared with me. And Lord, we can't open our own enlightenment. We can't see and understand the mysteries and the things that are within the supernatural that only you can. We can't do it without your help. We can't do it without you opening the way, moving the blinders that are over our eyes and removing the veil and we ask that you do these things, Lord, to help us, which is your intent. In the name of Jesus the Christ, and we thank you for what we know you've already done, Lord. Amen. Most reading and listening to this lesson either know about or have at least heard of the farmer's almanac. It's a book, also called a calendar, in existence since 1818 that makes predictions, charts days, weeks, and months, gives experienced advice, and has been thought of as fairly accurate over the many years that it has been published. Although it is a respected tool for those who take seed, time, and harvest seriously, there are a large number of casual gardeners, curious onlookers, and novices who use this book as well. After all, it is available to anyone and everyone who wants to pick from its knowledge. The Almanac shares advice on natural remedies, lore, meaning old traditions and beliefs handed down through the centuries, the favorable days to do outdoor activities, and the effects of seasons and years as they relate to your best chances of accomplishing your farming and gardening goals. Whether or not some will be able to eat, sell their goods, and survive depends on knowing these things. What you know or don't know has everything to do with determining your standard of living. 
If you are not receiving knowledge that is heart opening, mind changing, and hope restoring, then what good is it? My guess would be that those who are faithfully following this series and are sober about finding out what's best for their spiritual as well as their natural well-being so that they can make a more informed decision on their tithing relationship with God have connected the dots and realize that I have already begun to deal with the ten blessing benefits of the tithe individually in these past three episodes. I am now teaching on the fourth benefit, which is an open heaven. The eyes of your enlightenment are going to play a very important role in your decisions and in your future. Do your best to make sure that they are wide open during the journey to your promised land and in the planning of your new life to come. We don't have the authority to compromise God's principles and systems. What he said will work, will work. And what he said won't work, will not work no matter how hard you try. The tithe helps you with your Eden life strategy so that you can live like the days of heaven on earth. Tithing is not magic. It won't reverse all of the bad choices, bad habits, and damage that you've done in your life. But it will reclaim the ten blessing benefits of provision for you that Adam's disobedience surrendered to Satan in the beginning. Clear your mind of whatever and whoever would distract you from this teaching. Make sure to pause and take notes so that you can review them over and over again. This is episode 21 of Understanding the Tide. The title of this lesson is The Believer's Living Almanac. Your scriptures are Genesis 8 and 22, Genesis 14 and 20, Proverbs 13 and 22, Malachi 3 and 10 John 15 1 and 2 and Ephesians 1 and 18 as always let's repeat those Genesis chapter 8 verse 22 Genesis chapter 14 verse 20 Proverbs chapter 13 verse 22 Malachi chapter 3 verse 10 John chapter 15 verses 1 and 2 and the book of Ephesians chapter 1 verse 18 Please pause and read them now and then continue with the lesson. Believe it or not, much of what we have to deal with, even to this day, is rooted in the choices that Adam made way back in the Garden of Eden. The name Adam in Hebrew refers to the very soil and earth that Adam was made from as it also points to the vocation of husbandman or farmer. What did Adam have that was so precious that God commanded him to watch over it as a good steward and to keep it?
Adam had a perfect relationship with God, the creator of the heavens and the earth. Adam had freedom, say so, or decision-making power over what happened in his own life. God gave him that ability through free will. Adam enjoyed the benefits of deciding what to do with his time. He had creativity, control and power or dominion over everything that God created for mankind. And the only one that he really had to answer to was God. Everything that was just mentioned here, including the things that grow up out of the ground, being good to eat, fall directly under the definition of wealth. Adam was a wealthy man. Money, as we call it in current times, is not wealth. Money or purchasing power in whatever form it evolves into comes and goes as a side effect of wealth. But never make the mistake of confusing the side effects or results of something with the cause or original manufacturer. Adam had it made in the shade as the saying goes. Adam was operating under an open heaven. Whatever he wanted, needed, and whatever he spoke obeyed his authority. He actually walked and talked with God in the cool of the evening with nothing in between them. But then he decided to follow the suggestions of one of the creations. Walking with God is how you and I should be. But instead, we perpetuate the sin and bad choice of worshiping the creation, while we often disbelieve and ignore the Creator, referencing Genesis 3 and 8 and Romans 1 and 25. People say things with authority, confidence, arrogance, and attitude that aren't even true. How often have you heard someone say, I'm not doing this for my health? Well, the truth is that actually you are. Everything that you do affects your health. When you read and teach from the Bible, it's the best spiritual medicine that you can get. The Bible is a big bag of seeds full of healthy meat and fruit of the Spirit. And even though it was written over thousands of years to be the believer's living almanac and was specifically written for spiritual husbandmen of faith, many have picked seeds from this bag planted them, and received the harvest of their labor, just as they have done with the farmer's almanac. This just goes to show you that God's methods work. Better knowledge improves your mental, physical, spiritual, and financial health. And thank God for giving us the Bible as an instruction manual to lead us back to a cool walk in the earth with him. The Bible is not a get salvation quick product. Everything takes time and as long as the earth remains, God's laws will keep working. The problem is what you give out easy seems less valuable. A fancier Bible with golden edges, an abundance of red letters, large copy, and side-by-side -side columns of commentary will not guarantee you a shortcut to salvation 
or that you'll be a Bible scholar. Old-fashioned fasting, praying, surrendering to God, and studying will do you a world of good. During this recent pandemic, many have found out something that they never would have believed before. Tithing has nothing to do with a building. It's about planting God's given seed into the work of a fertile ground ministry. This is actually something that you can find by reading the Believer's Living Almanac, which is the Bible. Some of the early writings of what would later become the Old Testament of the Bible were spiritually scribed by Moses. Over 1,000 years after Father Abraham walked the earth, God reached back in time and shared his truth with the mind of Moses so that we wouldn't get caught up in misinformation and the temporary things that God allows for a season in the earth. Could it be that buildings, decorative furniture and wall hangings, symbolic etchings and titles are not God's main focus in all of this? I stated in an earlier episode that every single one of us is not only born into financial bondage, but that the Bible tells us that we are all born in sin. Salvation is the freedom that God offers us from the bondage of sin. It is obtained by grace through faith because of the work that Jesus the Christ did on the cross. I mentioned Moses because it is he who wrote to let us know down through history that Father Abraham gave the tithe, referencing Genesis 14 and 20. God heard the prayers of Abraham, meaning God listened and responded. This is the definition of an open heaven nothing blocking your prayers as God did with a tithing Abraham God walking beside you in the earth with nothing separating his presence from you as he did with Adam being able to know that God heard you as could be said about Samuel in 1st Samuel 7 and 9 being blessed to be a good man and a good steward, leaving an inheritance to your children's children, referencing Proverbs 11 and 22, because you are a tither and you understand and follow the supernatural, eternal teachings of the believer's living almanac. Everyone wants freedom and a good life, and it's important that you know what that is if you ever plan to take hold of it. Is it even possible for the knowledge that God gives you to be more valuable than the cash in your pocket or whatever you have in your bank account? Absolutely. God is the only one who knows the future and he's been there and done that. Don't allow yourself to get caught up in the confusion, distractions, and hype of the trending noise of the day. There's no way that any of it can do you or your family any good. Study your Bible, pray, and seek to have an open heaven in your own life, which God promises through the tide. Remember that as long as the earth remains, there will be seed, time, and harvest. So be mindful of what you're saying and doing to others, referencing Genesis 8 and 22. There is a great wealth transfer happening right now before your very eyes. 
And while the non-believers think that this has everything to do with money, you will know that it's really all about your time, freedom, and dominion. I have done what the Lord commissioned me to do, and I can only pray that this lesson has helped to open the heart and mind of whoever has listened. If you would like to make Jesus the Christ your Lord, Savior, and King, repeat after me. Heavenly Father, according to your word in Ephesians 2, 8, and 9, I understand that I can only be saved by grace through faith. I accept and receive the work that your son Jesus has done on the cross on my behalf. How he shed his blood and gave his life so that I can have salvation or deliverance from sin and the kingdom of darkness. I confess with my mouth that I believe Jesus the Christ is your son and I accept and receive him as my Lord, Savior, and King according to Romans 10, 8 through 15. I thank you Lord for the sacrifice of Jesus the Christ and what it means to me and for me. Amen. Your help is always needed and welcomed in whatever form that the Lord places on your heart. If you would like to donate and support our ministry and work, please send your contributions through our PayPal. The link is listed below. All gifts are greatly appreciated, and there is no gift too small to matter. We're not asking that you donate to receive this teaching series. You're already receiving that for free. What we do ask is that you consider our honor system. If our teachings have helped you in any way, or if you'd like to support our upcoming book series called When Tithes and Offerings Won't Pay the Bills, please give through our PayPal account at Healthy Java Talk. The link is listed below. We welcome your gift of any amount. Make sure to watch for the release of my book series when tithes and offerings won't pay the bills. Remember to follow us on Facebook and subscribe to our YouTube channel so that you can receive notices when we post new lessons. Come back and join us here again next time, God willing, for another lesson of Understanding the Tithe. Our background music, You On My Mind, was composed and performed by Jay Mann at www.ourmusicbox.com. God bless you. Thank you.